I'd love to do stereography for a living. That would be so much fun. I have such, I mean, obviously you guys know I have such a passion for it, even if I've kind of been lacking on this channel recently. That, uh, that shift in the horizontal axis though, that was intense. Most of the time you can't tell when I've shifted the horizontal offset but sometimes like that, you can tell I did it. And I think there was a certain point where I just kind of stopped doing it. I found a nice medium where things weren't like way out of the screen, but they weren't way behind the screen. The other thing I had to think about too was the ghosting because of the lights around the side. I could probably have changed some camera settings on this thing so that the lights weren't so blown out, but I, I didn't do that. And the other thing, and it could just be my TV, it's probably that. This is a 1080p TV, but I would like to have sharper video. Uh, I like I always prefer 3D over 4K, even though I understand the value of 4K. But I think those are two things that don't have to be exclusive to each other. I think that both of them complement each other. You know, if you have a sharper image, then all the little details in 3D pop out more. And 3D in and of itself helps the details pop out more. You're able to spatially place things and it's not like a big jumbled gobbledygook mess. This might not be a fantastic video to show that off, but there are videos. There's one about the art of 3D storytelling and I'll put it, the link in the description where uh, someone talks about how important 3D is. And it's a beautiful video. Absolutely stunning. Can't have said it better myself. And he shows off some images. This is an old computer. They actually used these computers up into the 90s, I believe. And check this out. This workstation, 3D capable. My man's out here back in the day watching their uh, 3D Pixar shorts on their little 3D monitor there and those goggles up there for 3D. It would be cool to see that at some sometime, but I don't I don't even know if that machine works. They probably gutted it. Probably gutted it of all the American secrets. I'm yawning a lot. I got good sleep last night, mostly. I kept waking up, but I would always fall back to sleep sleep is like a fickle thing uh, i don't i don't i wouldn't say i particularly have issues sleeping there will be periods of time i guess when i'm under more stress and i i just like obviously i won't be able to sleep as well but like i'll overthink i will overthink sleeping and not like oh god am i gonna get enough sleep but like i don't know it's like, am I getting too, is this getting too existential? It's like the idea of, you, when you go to sleep, it's like, it's like a, you know, you close your eyes and you wake up and it's day. Like, all that time you spend awake, and I probably spend more time awake. Oh, that monitor there. I keep getting off topic. That monitor there, so there's a few monitors placed around the building. And those are like, I, I suppose they're professionals that know about this kind of thing, these planes and stuff, and you can talk to them live about things. And this is an actual space shuttle that went to space. I'm kind of glossing over that. That went to space. Actually, all, a lot of this stuff in here went to space. And I think it's astounding. It's cool as shit. Anyway. Uh, you think about it, like you close your eyes and you wake up like several hours later and it's like daytime and it's like an instant for you, like your brain, but in real life, it's not, it's like, you know, hours. I don't know why that messes with my head so much and why it makes me not able to fall asleep sometimes. I try not to think about it. You drive yourself crazy thinking about it. I guess that was a little bit part of my issue last night. I was like, dang. You know, it's like I'm a, I'm literally about to turn over and fall asleep. And then it's like, but my mind's like, but wait, isn't that weird how that happens? That's weird and scary. And you don't want to do that. And I'm like, why? You know, what? what's the deal? What is literally the issue here? 
I I don't know. You you get older. I I feel like people get more afraid the older they get. Like like people like aha oh you're scared such a baby, and it's like no dude being afraid is purely an adult thing. Kids aren't afraid of anything, dude. They're fearless. Like they might be like oh monster in the closet, but like it, it's like a one and done kind of thing. Adult fears are like a million times worse. This got really dark. These are the World War II planes. Pretty cool. And we're going to see a plane workshop that used to have an X-Wing in it. It's not there anymore. We're going to see that coming up. Like how some of these planes have little spirals in the front. <laughs> see that, man. You know, by the time you see that spiral, you're like roasty toasty. It's some cool biplanes. I don't even know if that's what that is. I don't, I'm going to get the terminology wrong for a lot of this stuff and make a lot of people very upset. They're going to be like, uh, actually, that's a, um, Scooble Scorf Mechandome. Uh, how could you not know that? All right. You literally went to the museum. Did you read the plaque? No, I didn't read the plaques. I probably should, though. This museum is free. The Smithsonian's are free. These are cameras, by the way. I'm filming... Some of these are 3D cameras. I'm filming 3D cameras with the 3D camera rig. This, uh, these, the Smithsonian's are free to go to. They're actually... They, the Smithsonian's are being paid off with the interest of the initial amount of money that was given to the United States government to make the museums. There was some guy, and I don't know if he was French or what the deal was, but he was from Europe, and he donated a ton of money to the U.S. government so they could, like, quote-unquote, educate people or make museums or something like that. And they haven't spent a single dime of that money. All these museums, well, obviously they they have a lot of donations, but they're primarily funded off of the interest of that initial uh, sum of money that they were given. They haven't even touched it. It's like sitting somewhere. So it's cool. But the parking here is 15 bucks. So I guess that's the fee to get in. I, they, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, well, I suppose if you come by bus, it's like, you're technically not paying to get into the museum, but you know, paying $15 to park is like, this is kind of like paying to get into the museum. I'm not talking about these helicopters here. These little baby man helicopters. By the way, I walked past this thing. And I was like, wait, I got to go get a shot of this. This floating snipers platform. It's literally a UFO. I don't know where I'm going in this video anymore. I, I don't mean with like the commentary. I don't know. Like, I think I'm going up this spiral staircase. So it's got an elevator in this uh, in the inside of it, but that's not as visually interesting as walking up around the edge. I also have to balance between looking down at the camera view screen and looking ahead to because I want to make sure that the shots are good, but I also want to make sure like I'm not walking into anyone and I'm I'm seeing everything for myself. It's a balancing act, you know. And maybe I should get, like, a buddy to come. I, I try to get my friend Max to come along, but he busy. I mean, I didn't tell him I was going up here this day, but he... It was kind of a spur-of-the-moment thing. I was kind of like, ah, screw it. I was just going to go up and do it. Sometimes you got to be like that. Sometimes you just got to be like, ah, screw it. I'm going to do it. Just do it. Just do it. The only person stopping you is you. Just keep that in mind. Uh, if there's something you really want to do, is a dream that you really have, you know, the only, there are ways to get it done. The only person stopping you is doing, is you, and it might not be 100% to what you were trying to get, but I guess it's like the song, you know, you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you might find you get what you need. Ooh, wow, we're really high up, looking over the edge. 
I did not manipulate the horizontal offset for these shots. Outside of what I had already done. I wanted the, the depth to feel natural. Like it really felt like we were going up higher and higher. Look at that. Look at that hot air balloon basket. Doesn't have a balloon though. Like how the cameras aren't, the 3D isn't too extreme. They're just far apart enough for objects that are decent a bit of ways to still have volume to them. I think if I had them closer, it wouldn't have come out as well. I don't even know what to say next. I got work today. Looking forward to it. I mean, it's an eight and a half hour shift, which by the way, I gotta remember to clean this uh, water or this, this liquid bottle. I guess you could put water. I'm not going to call it a water bottle because you can put more than water in it. Uh, clean it out. I haven't even used it yet. It's the bottle I had when I worked at AMC. I'm going to use that. But I, like I said, I haven't cleaned it. But the... Uh, this is So this is one of the walkways. One of the catwalks. Do a little turn on the catwalk. I don't, is that the lyrics to that song? I don't know. And it's cool that not only do you get to view what it looks like underneath the planes, but you get to view what it looks like above them. And that's a pretty brilliant design. Not only that, you can fit more planes in if you, you know, hang them up. These are some really good shots. Unfortunately, the catwalks can't fly with magic. So they have these poles that, yeah, there, see, there's one that come across occasionally. But I think it's fine. It adds to the effect. But the stuff up here, yeah, it definitely looks cool. The other issue is the plaques get in the way. And so I can't have the planes that are hanging in the ceiling come too close. Because, you know, then the plaques, would it would just be horrible to look at. It's one of the things you have to balance. This is where cinematography comes in. You have to set your shots up so that doesn't happen. But... Like I said, I was in kind of a rush because I didn't want my camera batteries to die and, I, and not having gotten the entire museum. But I'm pretty efficient at this point. I've been through this museum a million times. I showed my friend Max's museum uh, some time ago. We saw the Batman here in IMAX. He was really impressed. Uh, with the IMAX presentation and the museum itself. I don't blame them. It's cool. Maybe the railings and stuff give a better sense of placement for everything. I don't know. Like you can tell how far away everything is. I mean, everything in this video, it's nearly... The cameras are nearly like uh, eye distance apart from each other. So it's kind of a realistic view of what it would look like. It's like it's a bit exaggerated just for artistic reasons because I wanted everything to have more volume in it because I knew things were going to be far away and I'm in a big open space which usually you can get away with deeper 3D in large open areas. But it's about how it would look like. Here's a long stretch of path. Oh no, more planes. I also turned the auto stabilization on the cameras, which is why it's not super shaky. Like it's a bit shaky, but it's not like almost unwatchable. Like the Sully one was, I don't know what was going on there. I also try to smooth out my camera movements as much as I can. I know that like, I'm not a machine. I can't do it perfectly. So it doesn't always come out great. Oh boy, am I too close to the microphone? Ah, I'm stretching and yawning, man. And here's a long stretch of time where it's just nothing, really. I remember walking, I remember when Max came in here the first time and he saw that drone that's hanging off and that I just moved the camera away from because I started talking about it now. 
I like the railing here though. Again, I say it again because you can see it's like a good lead off into the distance. I don't know. It's just a good frame of reference for 3D. But that drone that you guys have seen once or twice throughout the video, he didn't realize how big those things were. And most people don't realize how big those drones are. They're really big. And I'm like, yeah, man, it <laughs> they're, they're pretty spooky. Maybe not spooky. Maybe that's not the right term, but they are indeed large. In fact, there's a lot of objects that are a lot larger than people realize, but they're just so far away that you don't realize that they're that big. Like traffic lights, pretty damn huge. There's the blue angel again, baby. And there's a rescue helicopter. I always have these horrible ideas. Well, actually, I don't have these horrible ideas, but I always be thinking about, you know, what if the plane just fell from the ceiling? What if it was just like crack and then fell? But I'm sure those things are like inspected weekly or monthly to make sure nothing's going on with them. Because you damage not only the plane, you could hurt, you know, actually probably kill somebody if that thing fell on you. Uh, you could damage the planes on the ground. Be a huge mess. And a lot of these planes are irreplaceable. I mean, imagine if something fell on the Enola Gay. Imagine you destroyed that. Actually, there's a lot of people that would like to destroy it. When we get closer to the Enola Gay, I'll talk about that a bit more. I know I talk about the Enola Gay a lot. I keep saying Enola Gay, Enola Gay, Enola Gay, Enola Gay. I don't know the lyrics to Gucci Gang or else I would have said the uh, follow-up to, to that. there's the entrance to the museum all the lights blown out and i edit this stuff in anaglyph so if the anaglyph is like got ghosting i kind of tend to try to make that less bad i could probably do some saturation adjustments or lighting adjustments in post to help mitigate that but whatever when you see it in real d3d or in vr and I say real D3D, but you know what I mean. With polarized lenses, then you don't really get ghosting issues too much or at all. There's also an observation deck where you can go up into this radio tower and look down at the ground or the area around. And on a very nice day, you can actually see Dulles Airport and the planes coming into land. And... Some days are better than others because they have different, they, they open up different runways. So sometimes the planes will fly right next to the tower. It's really cool. But it was closed by the time I got up there. The observation deck closes at like three. And I didn't get in until like around three. So yeah. Also didn't realize how blue inside this area was. I don't know why it's so blue in here. But it's blue. Da ba dee da ba do. I'm blue. Da ba dee da ba di. That's a redstone missile for all you Minecrafters out there. Thought that's a funny meme. I thought redstone was just something that was invented for Minecraft. Oh, speaking of that model down there, which I didn't get a good look at earlier because there was a guy hanging around it and I didn't want him to think I was filming him. He. Or not he uh the model is actually from close encounters of the third kind oh that guy that security guard guy he was like oh cool rick cool cameras i was like oh thanks it's a model from oh uh oh swastika gonna have to blur it out just kidding i'm not gonna do that uh close encounters of the third kind it's a model from that i believe the smithsonian the air and space smithsonian the Smithsonian, huh Oh, yeah, they should have a Smithsonian all about myths and legends called the Smithsonian. That'd be funny. The Air and Space Museum in DC has the Star Trek the original series model. I think it was from the original series. It could also be from Next Gen, but I'm pretty certain it was original series Enterprise. It's a good shot of the Discovery. I mean, just it just it went into the space, man. Can you believe that? Like, you're literally standing next to something that went into outer freaking space. 
There's a bunch of satellites. I believe these are just recreations. I don't think these are actual space use satellites. You know, I would I would really love to see Sputnik. Do they ever recover Sputnik, or is that just floating off in the space somewhere? If they if they recovered it, I would love to see it. Because it's like the first satellite or something. So we're getting ready to walk up on the airplane workshop where they refurbished the planes. This is where the X-Wing was that one time, but it's gone now. Sadly. I don't really get too much video of it. it the next part of this is going to be like nothing. It, it, it's not going to be much. There's really nothing over here outside of that area. <sighs> Am I still recording? Yeah, 43 minutes. We're about at the end of this. I have two new followers on Instagram. Oh, crap. My boy went live. My boy live streaming. If you happen to live in Northern Virginia and you haven't been to the Udavar Hazi Center, I would highly recommend it. It's got good facilities, big open area, just lots of cool stuff. Planes are cool. History is cool. Don't, don't think it's lame. It's cool because it happened and it's real and it's there. That's the best way I can describe it. You know, I, I wouldn't even like consider myself. I don't even know why I clung, cling to history like that. I wouldn't really say that I like, I look into history a bunch. I just get fascinated by being at a historical area or seeing a historical thing like Sully. Good, you know, good example. Oh, there's another. Yeah. So those are the World War II planes. Really cool that they have those. I don't know why they put a little squiggly camo, camo, can't think of the word, camo, camouflage design at the top. There's a glider. There's a lot of gliders in here. You can see the Concorde way off in the background taking up the entire museum. And it's cool the planes are at different angles as well. They're not just like hanging normally. They're like, whoa, they're like really flying. Imagine if they did a night at the museum at this place. <laughs> It'd be an absolute chaotic mess. That plane's upside down. Straight up. Okay, so you see how there is a glass thing on this side? Is that a dummy in there? Or is that just a chair? That kind of freaked me out for half a second. So there's a plexiglass shield up in front of the Enola Gay. And the reason for that is that every year on the day that the bomb was dropped in Hiroshima. So I haven't seen it myself. Not the, the bomb dropping, but the thing I'm about to talk about. It's just, just what I've been told. Uh, people come up and they, they do a little protest. And I suppose that they have that shield up there to protect the Enola Gay from getting damaged. I guess there's a thin line. There, there's a line there. And this is going back talking about history again. A line there about, you know, preserving things art and machines and things from history whether they be good or bad and you can make an argument about you know statues which were was a huge thing a few years ago and, and maybe it still is i don't know do people still care about statues is that still a hot topic or did did we get bored of that uh but someone who grew up near richmond who went up to richmond a lot and i've made videos about going up to richmond you guys know that Ooh, that plane wing was really close to our head. These planes, you get a lot closer to them than you expect, but don't don't touch them. Don't touch the museum museum exhibits unless they say you can. You don't want to get plane cooties. We're coming up on the end of this video also, so I gotta hurry up. I guess there's an argument to be made about preserving historical things like statues and whatnot and blah, 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 blah. I think you can preserve something and make a note of it, make a note of its historical. I think we're 
we're coming up really close to the end of this video. I don't want to like get cut off. Yeah, we're like 58 seconds from the end. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for watching this video. And if you want to talk more about preserving historical items and stuff, then that will be for another video. But yeah, this is a cool museum. Thank you for checking this out. And I would highly recommend going there and seeing it in person. Uh, the 3D is good, but in person is even better. All right, you guys have a great day. And it should end soon. I don't know what's going to end. Soonish. Hopefully. No. No, it's still going. There's some... There are some simulators down there. I stumble over my words a lot. I don't have a script. I'm just kind of making things up. I've never done those simulators, by the way. They also cost extra money, which is the big reason why I haven't done them. I, I doubt they would have let me brought bring my 3D cameras on there. Oh, I guess that's the end of the video. Uh, bye.